Looking at leak code number 22, it's a question called generate parentheses. I really like this question. I think it's a, a great question. As you start getting deeper and deeper into it, it really clears up a lot of, uh, a lot of confusion around backtracking, uh, recursion. It touches on a lot of concepts. So I, th I think it's a good one to be very familiar with. Um, and I feel it's pretty, pretty frequently asked too. Yeah, you can see a lot of companies like to ask this question too. I can see why. It's 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 a it's a good one that tests a lot of a lot of concepts in in one go. Okay, so here we're given an uh, n pair of parentheses, and we want to write a function to generate all combinations of well formed parentheses. So here n equals three, and we can see that well formed parentheses. So the length of our output, our sub result, is going to be n times two, it's gonna be six. And so we can see that this is a valid parentheses, this is a valid parentheses, so on and so forth. n is one, so if we multiply that by two, the length is going to be two, and the only valid parentheses we can have of a length of two is just one, one parentheses. Okay, so let's, let's kind of take a look at how we can approach this. now. If you haven't seen the videos uh, in my the, in the other other the rest of the playlist, I highly recommend checking those out. I'm going to be using a backtracking template to solve this. We're going to look at an inefficient way of doing this, and then we'll look at how we can add a few things to our to our template to make this very very efficient. Uh, in in particular, backtracking. So the idea here is that we have n equals three, and we want to get all the combinations of parentheses when n is, or the length is sixth, okay? So we can have two options here. We can have, we can add an open to our slate, or we can add a closed to our slate, okay? Here I'm gonna just use n is two, just for the sake of simplicity, because if it goes above two, this tree is gonna get huge. And so I'll just use uh, two as an example. So at each level, when we go into our recursive case, we're going to have two options. We can either add an, uh, an open parentheses, uh, or we can add a close parentheses. Okay? And as we go down, we can add uh, an open parentheses or a close parentheses to our slate. Open, and this will be closed. And so on and so forth. Now, I went ahead and drew out the whole tree over here just to kind of give you, you know, just to kind of give you an idea of what this is gonna look like when it hits the base case. We wanna have a base case where the length of our sub result, whatever's in our slate, is, um, is equal to n times two, right? So n times two is four, our length equals four, that means we hit our base case. And we wanna check at this leaf level do we have a valid parentheses? And what we could do in an inefficient way is just create a valid parentheses helper function and check is this valid? And then if it is, we can push that into a global result. Okay, so that's one way we could do this. The only problem with doing it that way is that we're going to have to go and make out this entire tree. Now the, the question is, is can we backtrack? At, so, at some point in this tree, can we say, okay, we have something in our slate that lets us know that there's no point in going down the recursive tree. There's no point in building any more uh, candidates because we know that nothing is going to be valid after this point, okay? So if we look here, we can see that this right here starts with a closed parentheses. And if it starts with a closed parentheses, there's no point in going down the rest of this tree here because there's nothing here that's going to be valid. Okay, let's look at what's valid here. Our valid answers are gonna be, uh, let's see here, this is valid and this is valid, and I believe that's it. Right, so we can see here that here, there's no point in going down the rest of this tree here because nothing is gonna be valid if, if uh, we have a closed parentheses. Likewise, if at any point we have more open parentheses than closed, then nothing can be valid, right? If we have three open parentheses and our limit is four, there's no way, there's not enough closed parentheses that's going to match it, so we know that we can backtrack right there. 
there's no need to go down this tree because nothing is going to be valid. Okay? So what we can do is we can add a backtracking constraint. We can keep track of how many open and closed parentheses we have as we're going down the call stack. And at any point, if we have more open parentheses than n, okay, which is half the number of the length at our base case, then we can backtrack. So we can say, if we'll create a variable, two variables, we'll say open count is going to equal zero and close count is going to equal zero. Okay. And so here we're adding one to close count. And because it's going to be one and that's higher than open count, we can just backtrack right there. Okay. So we can just say if uh, close count is greater than open count, then we want to return. Okay, so that'll be our first backtracking case. Now the other case is, is that if we have more open than n, right, that means that there's going to be, you know, if n is four and there's three open parentheses, then we know that there's no, no point in going down and making more uh, candidates because there, none of them will be valid, right? So we can say if open count is greater than n, we can return. Okay? And that's the idea. If we add those two in there, then we don't have to go down and make, you know, like go down the, uh, the whole tree. Now, what is our time complex space complexity uh, worst case with this, right? Well, if we're not pruning, then we're going to have to do two to the n, n times two, right? Because n is going to be four if we multiply it by two. So then our base case is four. And so we're going to have to uh, do two to the n times two. And then we're gonna have to multiply that by n because we're gonna have to scan this at the leaf level and push it into our global result. Now, if we do this backtracking, what is our time complexity? Well, it, it gets really complicated at this point. Worst case, I, I feel that it's still O to the two to the N times two times N, but you can see that it adds a lot of efficiency. We're gonna solve it both ways in the code just to kind of compare and contrast and you can see how much more efficient it is. Uh, using the backtracking constraints that we added to it. Okay, what about space? Uh, worst case, you know, it's the same thing. It's two to the n times n. And why is that? Because we're gonna have to have, at any point, we're gonna have our global result. And if we have to add all of these results in there, okay, that's gonna be our two to the n. And when we get to the bottom here, we're going to have space on the call stack, which is going to be N. Okay, so we're gonna to have to have uh, the, our call stack space, which will be N, and then our global result, which will be two to the N. So it'll be two to the N times N. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in the code. Let's try it both ways, and we can use the leak code performance metric to kind of show what are the different um, time and space complexities that we're getting using an efficient way with backtracking or not using backtracking. Okay, so first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this template. And if you're not, you're, if, you, if this is the first video you're seeing of this playlist, I highly recommend checking out the other videos because I'm using a template. I'm not gonna go over too much uh, of, of, I'm just gonna go ahead and implement it. But I do go over this template in great detail in the other videos. So highly recommend checking those out. So we have a global result. Okay, and I'll call this const result. We'll set this to an array. And then we're gonna have our depth first search um, recursive helper. Okay, so we'll do const depth first search. We'll set i. We're gonna have n, we'll have a slate. Okay, and so now what do we wanna do? We wanna check if uh, I is equal to n times two. That means we're at the base case, our leaf level. 
then what do we want to do? We want to check is whatever is in our slate a valid parentheses. So we can create a helper function. So I'll just say if is valid. And we'll go just do a slate.join. OK, and if it is, then we want to push that into our global result. So we can just do a result.push slate.join. And then we can return outside of that if statement. OK, so all we're doing here is we're saying when we get to the leaf level here, is it a valid parentheses? Is this a valid parentheses? If it is, let's go ahead and push it into the global result. If it's not, then we just go ahead and, and return out of there. We backtrack. OK, so now we're going to have our um, depth first search uh, recursive, recursive call. And what do we want to do? We want to add an open. So we can say add open paren and add close paren. OK, so we're going to add an open parentheses to the slate and a close parentheses to the slate. So we can say slate.push, we will add an open. OK, we'll uh, call depth first search, we'll increment i, we'll have n, and we'll pass in our slate. And then we'll, push, uh, we'll pop this off the slate. All right, and then we're just doing the same thing for our closed but we are just changing this to a close parentheses, okay? And so again, all we're doing here is we're coming here, we're adding to the slate, and then when it comes back, we're popping it off and then we're adding it to that. So we're just using one, one slate array rather than concatenating and creating a bunch of extra space, okay? And so now what we're gonna do here is we'll call depth first search, uh, we'll initialize it with I, we'll pass in N, a slate will be an empty array, and then we'll return our result. Okay, so, and then let's just go ahead and create our valid paren. So we can create um, is valid, and this will just take in a string. And then uh, I'm not gonna go over valid parentheses, I'm just gonna write it out, but I do have a video where I go into, de into depth on using, or how to validate a parentheses. We wanna use a stack, so we can just say const stack. Set it to an empty stack, and then we can um, set i, so let i equals zero, let len equals dot length. Okay, and now we just wanna say uh, while, i is less than uh, len. And then we want to take our character, so we can say let per paren equals string at i. Push this onto the stack, stack.push. And we want to push our current paren. OK, and now what we want to do is we want to pull off the two elements on the stack and check if it's a parentheses. And if it is, we pop those two off the stack. Again, I'm not gonna go too much into depth on how to do this. I do have another video on valid parentheses uh, that I would check out if, if you're confused on this. Uh, but what we're gonna do here is, let's see here, we're gonna have open. So let open is gonna equal stack at stack.length minus two. Okay, let closed equals stack at stack.length minus one. Okay, and then we just want to check if open plus closed equals a parentheses, then we want to pop those pop those two off the stack. So we just want to call stack.pop and stack.pop. And then lastly, we want to just, if there's nothing left in the stack, that means we have a valid parentheses. So we just want to return stack uh, dot length equals zero. Okay. I'll zoom out so you can see all of this code in one go. Let me just zoom out one more so that way it's clear. Okay, and let's go ahead and run this and see what type of performance we get. Uh, let's see, we have we have uh, 
we have, oh, we have to increment i, sorry. There we go. Okay, and so we can see here that this works, but it's terrible, terrible performance, right? We're only beating 5% of, of, of the submissions on time and 5% on space, right? So it works, but it's not very efficient, okay? So let's look at how can we make this more efficient by adding backtracking, okay? So like I said here, we know that if we keep track of the open count and the close count, and at any point our, our close count is greater than our open count, we can return. And also if at any point our open count is greater than n, we can return, right? And so we don't even need to use this is valid helper. All we need to do is just pass in an open count and pass in a close count, all right? And now all we have to do is if I, if it actually gets to the bottom, we know it's valid. So if it gets to the bottom, we just add this to a result. We just say result dot push slate dot join, and then we return out of here. Okay, so this is going to be our base case. All right, and now we're going to have our backtracking case. All right, and what do we want to do? We want to check if uh, open count is greater than n, we want to return. And if close count is greater than open count, we want to return. Okay, if we just add those two constraints, okay, if close count is greater than open count, okay, or if close count, open count is greater than n, then we backtrack, right? And here we just want to uh, say if we're adding open count, we're going to say o count plus one, close count. And here we want to add o count and close count plus one, right? And then we just initialize here with zero and zero, right? So those small changes, we don't need to use that helper and let's take a look at how this 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 goes. Yeah, you can see we get like almost ten times better performance just by using this this backtracking case right here and keeping track of the count. Now, this is hard to understand if this is your first time seeing this on how you pass these variables down and how this all works. And that's why I highly recommend drawing out the tree. Okay, just do it with n equals two. Get a pen, pen and paper. And draw it out. And and once you start, once you draw it out, and you start realizing, oh, you can backtrack. Like when you draw out the tree, you can really see, is there something going on in our tree where at some certain point in our slate we know nothing else is going to be valid after that point, so we don't need to continue on, and we can backtrack right from there. We don't need to go all the way down to the leaf level. We can just backtrack at this level right there. And when you draw out the tree, it's very clear to see that. When you're looking at the code, it doesn't, it's not intuitive. It's not just going to pop out and make sense. And that's why I think that it takes a little time to get your head around recursion, combinat combinatorials and backtracking. This takes a little bit of time. But once you kind of, once you get this, it starts making perfect sense. And I think the way you want to approach it is, is to draw out the tree. Use a small input where you can draw out the tree and then start figuring out like, is there a way to backtrack here? Okay, I really love this problem. I think it's a great problem. Let's just submit it one more time so you can get even better performance. But I think it's a great case of looking at, okay, if we're, if we're, yeah, so here we got 84 on time and 93 on space. I think it's a great problem that, that really highlights the, the usefulness of using backtracking. And if we add backtracking to these types of problems, how we can just increase the efficiency uh, significantly. Okay, so that is leak code number 22, generate parentheses. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see everyone on the next one.